Hi everyone. If the Earth is round, why don't we fall off it? And how can water stick to a spinning ball? These are questions flat earthers want to think of as gotcha questions, but in order to do that, they have to deny the existence of gravity. Well, it should be easy enough to solve. If gravity doesn't exist, how do you explain this? Is it that easy? No, of course not, because flat earthers will claim that the pen didn't fall because of gravity, but because of density. Does this model of physics work? Let's find out. This is Fleur Pratt. Flat Earth points refuted a thousand times. Don't forget to rate the video, subscribe, and hit the bell. Before we begin, let me tell you about the sponsor of this video, Brilliant.org. If you want to take a step away from being as scientifically illiterate as a flat earther, one thing you can do is take interactive online courses in math and science. Of course, it would be even better to go back to college, but if you're like me, you have bills to pay and a family to take care of, so that's really not an alternative. At Brilliant, you can take courses whenever you want at your own pace. Five minutes a week or several hours a day. It's up to you. There are literally thousands of lessons available, with more being added monthly. The courses range from simple beginner-level topics suitable for people who regret sleeping through math and science in high school, and go all the way up to advanced university-level topics like vector calculus, quantum mechanics, or AI development. The courses feature interactive exercises that award you XP if you get them right. Get enough XP in a week and you advance to a higher league. It makes the learning process feel like a bit of a game and it encourages you to keep coming back for more. And most importantly, it makes you care about actually doing the exercises rather than just checking the answer and moving on. It makes you learn. Take it from a professional educator. Active learning like this is much more effective than passive learning, like just watching video lectures. Use the link below, brilliant.org slash martimer81, to get started on your free 30-day trial period today. The first 200 to sign up will get a 20% discount on their annual fee. And now back to the idiocy that is Flat Earth. Most flurfs, at least in my experience, claim that when things fall, it's because of a density differential. Downward motion is caused by an object being more dense than the surrounding medium. Let's call this negative density differential. Rho medium minus rho object is less than zero. I call this negative because it supposedly results in downward motion in an absolute universal down direction. If rho medium minus rho object is greater than zero, that is, if the object has lower density than the medium, then the positive density differential results in upward motion. The speed is also related to the size of the differential. A rock will sink faster in air than in water, because the density differential is greater in the former case. Sounds nice and neat, doesn't it? But does it work? Well, no. Here's a simple experiment that shows a severe flaw in this model. A simple set of scales and weights. If the Flurf's model is accurate, then the scales being balanced shows that both weights have the same density, which they do since they're made of the same material. Checks out so far. But let's put two weights on one side. The density is still the same, so obviously the scale should be... What the hell? The density differential between the weights and the surrounding air is the same on both sides, so how the hell can this happen? I have a suggestion. The downward force is the weight of the object, which has now been doubled on one side, but not the other. Another simple experiment confirms this. Going underwater. There is no density differential between water and water, so according to the Flurf's model, there is no downward force at work on a unit volume of water surrounded by more water. Yet we notice that the pressure increases at greater depths. The more water above you, the more water is pressing down. So there is a downward force, even without a density differential. What matters isn't the density, but the weight. So what is this weight thing? Before we have a look at that, we need to look at what a force is. A force causes acceleration. I'll just flick this toy car and it starts moving. The harder I flick it, the greater the acceleration. So is force just acceleration? No, let me flick a real car. Oh, it didn't move. It seems like it's resisting the force somehow. 
In fact, if we measure the acceleration of different objects that experience the same force, we find that we can define a physical property M such that the force F is directly proportional to the acceleration A, and M is the constant of proportionality for each object, that is, F equals MA. This is Newton's second law of mechanics. M is called mass. Weight is a force and thus depends on mass. If we measure the acceleration of falling objects, we find that if the density differential is large enough and negative, yes, that actually matters and I'll explain why in a bit, then we find that all objects accelerate down at about 9.8 meters per second squared. Objects gravitate downwards at 9.8 meters per second squared, hence... We say that the weight of an object is proportional to its mass, and 9.8, the gravitational acceleration, called g, is the constant of proportionality. But why does the density differential matter? To answer that, we first have to explain something that flurfs seem incapable of comprehending. An object can be affected by more than one force at a time. A rock sinks slower in water than in air, because it is affected by not only its weight, pointing down, but also an upward force, called buoyancy. A body submerged in a fluid displaces a volume of fluid equal to its own volume. This volume has a mass equal to the volume times the density, and thus a weight equal to its volume times its density times g. In other words, a body submerged in a fluid experiences a force of buoyancy equal to the weight of the displaced fluid. If a body has a greater density than the surrounding medium, that means its weight is greater than that of the displaced fluid, so it sinks. If its density is lower, then it floats. So yes, density matters. But, did you notice? Only if both the object and the surrounding medium have weight. If there is no weight, that is, if gravity didn't exist, then there would be no buoyancy either. And we can check this. All we need to do is cancel out gravity by looking at how buoyancy works in a freely falling frame of reference. This is a wooden die floating in water with food dye in it to make it show up better on camera. If I turn the cup, the die remains floating on the surface. Notice that I'm shooting this in super slow motion. Now look what happens if I drop the cup while the water is settling. The die becomes submerged and doesn't immediately float back up. The effect isn't that clear because the cup isn't falling for long enough. I'm limited by what equipment I have to work with. But fortunately, flurfs accept this anyway. They claim that when William Shatner went on his suborbital flight, they faked the weightlessness using a vomit comet. Vomit Comet is the nickname given to the kind of plane they use to train astronauts. The plane dives at freefall speed, letting the people inside it experience weightlessness for a while. This was also used to shoot the zero-g scenes in the movie Apollo 13. Because the plane is in freefall, the effects of gravity are cancelled out inside. And we notice that the passengers and the air inside don't sort themselves by density. There is, effectively, no weight inside, so there is no buoyancy either. The air doesn't float, and the passengers don't sink. Another thing Flurfs can't explain is why all falling objects accelerate equally once the density differential gets high enough. Wouldn't you expect something with twice the density to fall twice as fast? You'd expect that if what matters is the density differential as they claim, then a bottle full of water should fall much faster than a bottle full of air. And yes, technically it does because it has greater weight but equal buoyancy, but the difference is minuscule. And in a vacuum where there is no buoyancy, all bodies accelerate equally. So what we see is perfectly consistent with real science. That's actually why it is real science. Because it adjusts to the evidence. And it's completely inconsistent with things falling because of a single force produced by the density differential. In fact, Flurfs will even claim that density differential, and even density itself, is a force. But of course this is simply ridiculous, as density has dimensions of mass over volume, i.e. distance cubed, and force has dimensions of mass times distance over time squared. These are not the same. Density alone does not cause acceleration. Force does. 
density is not a force, and when flurfs claim that it is, they're just demonstrating how scientifically illiterate they are, as always. But there's one thing we have left to cover. Does weight act in a universal, absolute down direction? No, of course not. We already know that the Earth is round. I covered a bunch of reasons how we can tell in the first part of the series. So empirical observation tells us exactly what it told Isaac Newton. Objects gravitate toward the Earth and not in a universal down direction. He worked out that this force between two bodies should be proportional to both of the bodies' masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. This is Newton's law of universal gravitation. The reason we don't see small everyday objects attract each other is that this force has a very small constant of proportionality, big G. The force is so weak per unit mass that it's only significant if at least one of the bodies is the scale of a planet. But it's not too small to be measured. It just takes a little ingenuity. Henry Cavendish measured how much a torsion pendulum turns when subjected to a known force, thereby calibrating it. He then looked at how much the gravitational attraction between two lead weights of known mass, a known distance from each other, caused it to turn, and noticed not only that Newton's law of universal gravitation worked, he was able to calculate the constant of proportionality as well. Today, we've refined his experiment and determined it with much greater accuracy than he did. 6.674 times 10 to the minus 11 Newton meters squared per kilogram squared. Of course, flat earthers claim that it's all fake. This experiment really has a null result. But the experiment is done in college physics labs all the time. So their ignorance, as always, is a choice to make up a conspiracy theory instead of actually having to learn. They're wrong. They know they're wrong. And they want to be wrong. And this is far from all the reasons why we know that gravity can't just be explained away by saying density. There's more to come. See you next time.